This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community <coughs> matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel here on Think Tech, and this is Asia Pacific Business Strategies, which, as you know, is uh, every Thursday at one o'clock. And uh, we have uh, Michael uh, 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 hmm, uh, Michael North, and he's in Beijing right now. He is the true host of this. <laughs> I'm only acting as the local host, so to speak. Uh, and Michael is going to um, interview our guest, who is Bronson Chang. Bronson Chang is associated with um, name of the company now. What is it? Uncle Clay's House of Pure Aloha. Uncle Clay's House of Pure Aloha. It's in Aina Haina. It's going to be in Alamoana soon enough. We're calling the show Tasty Business Thrives with a Hawaii Spirit. So welcome to the show, Bronson. It's great to be here. Thanks, Jay. Michael, are you ready to uh, ask some questions? I'll turn it over to you. Born ready, Jay. Hello, Bronson. Hey, Michael. Hello. So my first question is, Jay Weiss, uh, you know, we get some viewers for this program from uh, the mainland, from across America, really from across the world. And not everybody knows what shave ice is. It's a rather local specialty in Hawaii. Can you define the term for us? Sure. So I guess aloha to all the brothers and sisters around the world tuning in here. It's great to be on the show. Uh, shave ice is really one of Hawaii's uh, local treats uh, that's really part of our culture. Uh, it started, you know, uh, with a lot of the immigrant plantation workers uh, needing a way to cool off uh, on a hot hot day in the fields and, and uh, taking some sugar, uh, some fruit, and then uh, shaving some ice and um, creating uh, in Hawaii what we call shave ice, not shaved ice. Um, and, uh, you know, what we do at Uncle Clay's House of Pure Aloha is really go back to that original form of it, which is all natural, um, you know, small batches, homemade versus, uh, you know, no, no artificial flavors or, or uh, preservatives. So it's a dessert, it's a food, uh, and it's sweet, but I think part of your point is to make it natural and healthy and combine all those elements together. Right. Right. And, you know, it's part of our local culture here and, and being able to do it in a way that uh, uh, yeah, celebrates that. Um, you know, one other thing I should mention about Hawaiian shave ice that is very unique about it is how fine it is. So uh, you should not be chewing or crunching on it. It should just melt on your tongue. And, and that's one of the distinguishing things about Hawaiian shave ice. Um, because there are other forms of it elsewhere in de delicious forms, you know, in other cultures and places around the world. But Hawaiian shave ice is, is uh, I guess, known more so for that fine texture. And uh, Ray, could you show us the image number eight here? This is a shot of the original Uncle Clay's in Aina Haina. For those of you who may not know it, it's a relatively small neighborhood style shopping center. Uh, just east of, of downtown Honolulu, and uh, this is this is a picture of you, Bronson, with your uncle Clay. Talk to us about Uncle Clay and what what part he plays in the formula. Sure. Uh, so Uncle Clay is an uncle to all, but he's my actual uncle, um, my dad's younger brother, and uh, you know, in this photo here, we're at Aina Aina Shopping Center, which is really where the dream began. Uh, Uncle Clay used to come to the shopping center as a uh, young child, and there was a uh, very popular, uh, what we call in Hawaii, crack seed store, or lihing mui uh, shop that he would go to and uh, buy you know, crack seed and, and candies. And even back then, you know, which now is over half a century ago, he actually would tell the owner that he wanted to own the store someday, and uh, he was that kid. Um, yeah. Forty years later, he uh, turned that childhood dream into reality and became the fourth proprietor of uh, that store. And um, you know, yeah, I, I past, heard he when, when he was five years old, he said, "I want to run that store one day." Right? 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's a true story, and um, you know, it's one of the things that I think uh, we are happy to be able to share as our company takes on you know new heights um, and continues to to grow is uh, the importance of of having a vision, having a dream, um, and and holding on to that and and doing what you can with persistence and belief to turn it to reality. And you know, uh, Uncle Clay has definitely. Uh, showed that, and um, he's inspired many, many people, including myself, to uh, continue to, to to dream big and and to take it from there. So you, as the younger generation, you took over uh, the day-to-day -day management of Uncle Clay's. He's still there, though. He still mm -hmm. uh, greets people and works with you, and he's still part of the trademark, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's there um, uh, almost every day serving our guests. Um, he likes to say that his only job is to to love on to others, and uh, he's really good at that. <laughs> you know, I was reading um, reviews of your store uh, on a couple of the websites. Um, one of them is the, the well-known site uh, Yelp, uh, and your, your place is one of the very top reviewed places to visit in Hawaii by visitors from around the world. Let me let me read you a couple of quotes, okay, Brunson? Sure. Um, one interview on Yelp says, the staff is friendly and the service here is great. I can't wait for this place to open in Ala Moana. The shave ice is so ono here. I've only tried the classic rainbow shave ice with mochi balls. Their flavors are just so ono, all fresh made real fruit syrups. So it's an inspiring multi-generational story, really, that you're able to turn a family tradition and a local cultural tradition into a good business. Um, talk to us about the business um, and how you run it. What are your objectives now? Sure. Well, you know, speaking to, to Yelp, and, and we're also you know very highly rated on TripAdvisor, uh, Certainly, it's it's the uh, 21st century word of mouth, you know, brought to the internet, and we've been so fortunate, uh, really, by all the people who have expressed their their uh, positive feedback and reviews for us, and um, that's really, I think, the foundation uh, and what makes our company really unique is uh, we really see ourselves as uh, integrated into the community. Um, we would not be where we are today if it weren't for all the multitude of uh, relationships uh, that you know really make a small business successful. You know, it starts with our guests, um, and they're more than just guests, but they're really uh, our ambassadors, and and um, you know, all the way to our team members and and the, the staff. And the team, we we uh, try to really empower with opportunities to not just uh, work a job, but to be part of a, a greater uh, movement of sharing pure aloha. Um, our vendors um, um, Ray, and so uh, on. Ray, maybe you can show us uh, graphic number three here. It shows the review of uh, of the store from Yelp, and we've got um, five stars all across the way. I, I forget. I think it's some several hundred reviews, and I think there's. Like ninety-eight percent five-star reviews um, yeah, we're of over your place now. It's and I, I noticed that you're using some language, Bronson, that's kind of modern and kind of corporate. You talk about people being team members and so on. It sounds like you're a Starbucks executive or something. You must have done some some study of the food service industry and of, of retail and so on. Uh, where does your where does your education come from, and how did you pick up on using sort of twenty first century terms for a really nineteenth century concept? Yeah, well, my my training started with uh, breeding, raising, and selling guppies uh, to pet shops when I was in middle school. That was my first company, and uh, ever since then, I always have been uh, very entrepreneurially inclined. Um, started another uh, online jewelry company in high school. Um, and so I continued down that path and studied entrepreneurship 
um, at the business school at the University of Southern California um, in Los Angeles. And um, yeah, you know, you, you definitely learn the, the how-tos of business by real-world experience combined with the, the classroom experience I had there. Um, but I think one of the most important parts of, of my philosophy really comes from uh, bringing values um, into the business workplace, into building a company. Um, you know, as passionate as I am about uh, entrepreneurship and, and business, I am maybe even more so, uh, I would say, passionate about making a difference, about service. And um, I believe that what we have tried to do at Uncle Clay's House of Pure Aloha is to uh, use the tools of business as a mechanism for impacting uh, our community in positive ways. Um, and so uh, it's a learning journey. You know, I, I still don't know a lot, but um, you know, through experience, you continue to grow and learn. So what to you, Bronson, is, is pure aloha? It's a word that is tossed around and it's become a commodity and it's used so much that it's become a cliche in some places. But I know that for you, aloha is not a cliche. Can you just give us a spotlight on what it means to you personally and what it means to the, the, the employees that you bring into the store and to the clients who walk through the door? Sure. I mean, at its core, in one word, uh, we use the definition of uh, love, pure aloha, pure love. And, uh, you know, aloha is, is something that, yeah, uh, you see used very commonly. Um, and the reason why we added the word pure was to emphasize the true nature of that, which is an unconditional love. I think as we go, we also um, know that it's such a deep uh, word with, you know, a lot of uh, need for reverence, and uh, it has a multitude of meaning and, and layers to it, um, you know. So it's at times hard to just define in, in one word, but if we were to choose it, it would be love. But uh, we've also you know, seen that uh, living pure aloha is most important, and, and how does that reflect in our behaviors, our actions, as far as um, how we treat each other um, and how we uh, act with integrity um, and uh, you know, it's a continuous journey here that we're doing of, of trying to live up to this uh, concept of pure aloha. Yeah, it's a lofty goal. Um, Ray, Ray, if we could bring up the, the next graphic, which is number four. Um, I believe that's the, the review um, from uh, TripAdvisor. I um, wanted to read just a short passage from that. Uh, it says, if Uncle Clay is there, you're in for a treat. He is kind and outgoing and likable. So I guess that's pretty much the spirit of Aloha, right? In in uh, in conventional terms, um, uh, that's that's what the spirit of Aloha is is about. Absolutely, yeah, welcoming and kind, and uh, we we our vision is is our entire one world Ohana living pure Aloha. Uh, so that's another you know concept that, that we have, a vision that we have, is really how can we uh, see that as uh, humanity we are all part of one world ohana, one world family. Yeah. Well, in a world where uh, welcoming and kindness and integrity are in, in increasingly uh, short supply, it's good to see that they're available at the Aina Haina Shopping Center. And I know that you have some pretty big uh, ambitions for the business, um, and you're expanding into Ala Moana Shopping Center, which for those of our viewers who may not be from Hawaii, is the, the premier retail destination for all of Oahu. It's one of the largest multi-function uh, retail sites in the entire United States. 
and recently went through a huge expansion. And I believe your your store is going into uh, part of that new expansion. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and why you're making this this big move? It, it's kind of risky for a little guy, for a little business like yours, to make such a big move onto a big platform with a lot more people and a lot more cost and very fast moving kind of Sure. Yeah, so All in One Center is is the world's largest outdoor shopping mall. Um, and the reason why we decided to uh, venture there is is really it goes back to our mission of sharing pure aloha. You know, we um, have been actually asked to open more uh, houses in, in different communities over the last six and a half years or so that we've been open. And we really have been waiting patiently for the right one. And uh, we were so fortunate to be invited to the project. Um, yeah, you were saying. So, you know, we were invited to this project and as we learn more about the opportunity, we felt that we could um, yeah, really bring our mission of sharing pure aloha in a, an unprecedented way you know, on the world stage as, as we like to see it of Ala Moana Center. Oh, going places, that's great. We're gonna take a short break now, but when we come back, I would like you to address this question, Michael and uh, Brunson. You know, we live in a world in a state where diabetes is, is prevalent. There's a lot of people who react to sugar and their doctors and medical counselors tell them, stay away from sugar. And of course, uh, shave ice is all about sugar. Mm -hmm. It's a real sugar high, so people like it so much. How do you deal with that? I mean, I, the fruit is partial, partial solution, that's healthy. But how can you tell them your product is healthy when we have a, a, an epidemic of diabetes in the state? Right after this one minute break, think about it, Bronson. Uh, I would like to hear the answer to that. We'll be right back. You'll see. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's going to drive? It's nice to know you're going to get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. For every game day, assign a designated driver. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness Mark, and every Monday at one o'clock, I present Think Tech Hawaii's research in Manoa, where we bring together researchers from across the campus to describe a whole series of scientifically interesting topics of interest both to Hawaii and around the world. So hopefully you can join me one o'clock Monday afternoon for Think Tech Hawaii's research in Manoa. Okay, we're back, we're live, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, it's Asia Pacific Business Strategies. Michael North is the host of this show. He joins us by Skype from Beijing. And our guest for this show is Bronson Chang. Uh, and he is part of uh, Uncle Clay's House of Pure Aloha in Aina Haina, now soon to be also in the Shirakia space at Ala Moana. So you guys uh, have any comment on a question that I posed before? Um, how, do you, how do you achieve a healthy food uh, using, you know, using shave ice as the product when shave ice is consistently full of sugar? Sure. So, you know, life is about choices, and what we do is try to give our guests, you know, the, the healthiest choice when it comes to having a dessert. Obviously, there's limitations to that. You know, we could do a purely, you know, uh, non-sugar version, and we've tried a lot of, mm. you know, very hard to, to do it, and it's quite difficult to actually make it taste good mm -hmm. and um, all we can say is that we do sincerely care about people and obviously that means that we have to look at our menu and how we develop it and um, you know one thing that we've done is really um, you know if you're gonna 
splurge on some some sugar and and have a shave ice. Well, why don't you do it without the artificial side uh, parts of it? The other is don't eat you know uh, a mountain of it, and we have a nice tiny portion right that um, that you can have um, if you want less syrup. Uh, we can also do that. You know, we really want to tailor it to what your needs are, um, and we're still on that quest to find the uh, perfect tasting, purely healthy shave ice. Uh, I'm not going to give up on it yet, um, but we're doing our best. Yeah, but one thing is clear. If you pour the syrup all over it, as some shave ice vendors do, and just load it up with the syrup, it's going to be, you know, all sugar. But if you limit the amount of syrup that you put on it, it's going to be, it'll still taste good, but it won't be all sugar. It'll be mm, sort of not as sweet, yeah? Right, right. Maybe we need to implement a uh, training program. So if you get, you know, you, if you want to buy that big shave ice, well, you better do 10 laps around the mall first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be uh, happy to be part of your testing team, Bronson. I know I can come down and help you out. All right, Michael, yours now. Okay, uh, if we could bring up uh, graphic number seven here so people can see what we're talking about. We've got, uh, we've got pineapple, we've got strawberry, we've got chocolate, we've got lily koi, all these beautiful flavors. Everybody can have a look at that and, and, uh, and you can probably taste it through the screen if you think about it. And I want you to talk to us now, Bronson, a little bit about the, uh, the business side of this, uh, of this project. Um, you've raised some capital in order to expand into Ala Moana, and you raised capital in a somewhat unusual way without selling stock in your company. How, how did that work? What was the idea there? Well, uh, I'm talking to the guy who helped me here, Michael, <laughs> and uh, I was introduced to um, to you uh, to discuss uh, the opportunity to use royalty investing, uh, royalty-based financing, and it really intrigued us because, uh, as a growing company, you know, we wanted to manage how we, you know, uh, managed uh, ownership of it. Um, we also knew that we had a lot of people that really wanted to invest in a way that wasn't about necessarily the traditional uh, notions of maximizing shareholder return, uh, personal you know, gain from the investment, but really uh, with the spirit of, of sharing pure aloha and, and doing that through you know, a financial um, agreement that allowed them to just get us going and, and started. And you know, if we did well, that we would able to would be able to share in that as well, um, but not, you know, give away the company. And so, uh, you know, the structure that we used was a royalty-based royalty structure, whereby uh, the return on it would be based on uh, the sales of the business. Right. So you're able to substantiate that there's uh, solid projections for increasing revenues. So if shareholders um, share in that uh, in that increasing revenue, then they will have immediate return rather than waiting for you to be able to sell your stock at some time in the future. And you didn't want to go into debt. So it seems like an interesting way to finance a small business, medium, even a large business. Um, talk to us a little bit about the about the the equity part of the program because I know that, this is a closely held family business. This is you and your uncle and a small number of other participants and why you wanted to preserve your equity instead of going the standard venture capital route to finance your company. Yeah, sure. So I think because our philosophy on the business is so unique, you know, it was really important that we preserve uh, our ability to continue to manage the business accordingly. Um, and, you know, the entire notion of, of a royalty-based investment uh, has been very consistent to, I think, 
the type of business that we are. Um, and even when we opened our first location, we uh, tapped into the crowds and uh, used crowdfunding as uh, a key mechanism for raising the capital that we needed. And, um, you know, it's this notion that uh, when you have support and desire from uh, the relationships that you've built over time, and we have, we've, we have a lot, uh, in what way can they, those relationships engage with helping us achieve the goals that we have in, um, you know, in this case, raising capital. Uh, it was something that we needed. Um, and being able to uh, go to our relationships and find a win-win a, a type of arrangement that they would be getting what they want and we would be getting what we want. Um, we were very open to these more creative ways of financing. So how does it work, Bronson? We're talking about royalties, or they also call it revenue sharing, which is fairly explicit. Um, how does it actually work? Investors put in some capital, and what do they get back? Sure. So capital is put in, and then uh, revenue shares are calculated based on the actual uh, revenues that come into the business, and then a percentage the, the, is the gross revenues, not the profits, right? Gross revenues, right? And so it's a uh, almost guaranteed, you know, repayment because it's based on those sales that are coming in versus, you know, the profits. And so, uh, you know, the better we do, uh, the more sales we get um, right from the beginning, right? Uh, there's a distribution of, of that to the investor. Right. I think that one of the key words that you used there was right from the beginning because Generally, uh, people who are investing in the stock of a private company uh, as venture capital investors, they have to be prepared to wait um, five years at least. The average time for a private company to have a, an exit or a liquidity event for private investors in the U.S. now is eight years. You have to be willing to wait for the, for the ship to come in. Um, but with uh, with revenue sharing, uh, I think you could say that the, the ship begins sailing immediately. Is that correct? Right. So, uh, and it makes it so that you don't have to lose um, your precious equity up front. You can conserve that, possibly for future rounds of financing, so that you're not getting diluted by um, by waves of investors coming in. Right. Was this was it difficult to arrange this from a legal and security standpoint? Uh, well, it took uh, great people like yourself, Michael, and we brought in an uh, attorney as well to review documents and make sure that it was um, structured in, in the right way. I, I do think that um, it was a learning process of setting it up. You know, it wasn't just a uh, template fill in the blank, but really a process of making sure that we created an arrangement that our investor was happy with and as well as we were happy with as a company. We're almost out of time, Michael, uh, so why don't you make this your last question? Um, Maybe you can speak to us finally about where you see the business going and what is the meaning of this project ultimately for you and your family, Bronson? Yeah, well, we really do feel that uh, we're on a mission of pure aloha and we're doing that one shave ice at a time. Um, you know, from day one till today, we've always uh, had that as our North Star. Um, We've been very blessed to have more opportunities come our way, and uh, I think we're in for an exciting um, month ahead as we open our shop in Ala Moana Center. Um, beyond that, what's, what's we- What's your target date? When do you open the doors? Um, we, we hope to uh, open by uh, early December, um, if not okay. sooner. We're trying our best to, to uh, rally 
the project forward. Um, but you know, I think when we uh, open this location, we really hope to show that um, you know, Pure Aloha has a place in the marketplace. Um, and if we could do it anywhere to show that, I mean, Ala Moana Center is, is a great place to do that. And, uh, you know. You know what they say, uh, if you make it in Ala Moana Center, you can make it anywhere. I think that's <laughs> what you're saying. Well, thank you very much, Michael and uh, Bronson. Great okay. to have you on the show and to learn about your business and this, this new chapter in it. Hope it works well for you and your investors. Uh, thank Appreciate you much, it. Bronson. Thank, Thank you, Michael. You, Aloha, Thank everyone. You, we'll be back Aloha. Next, next week uh, with more from Asia Pacific uh, Business Strategies.